Fantastic. welcome aboard, folks. It's really good to have you with us. And thanks for joining us on our little Zoom program. So you've got your recipes in front of you, or have you had a look at what we've sent you out in the newsletter but so you know what we're doing tonight? Yeah. Okay. So we're um we're doing um I'm going to start with the dumpling. So without any further ado, I'm going to crank up my um my cooker here. And it's already at a nice these are a great thing. So, to start with, I'm going to put some sesame oil, approximately two tablespoons, but I'm doing a Jamie Oliver tonight. So I'm just doing a splish splash, and near enough will do, um, which you can get away with. Um, the less the better. So I'm going to saute some onions, and while they're getting cranked up, I'm going to add some, um, I've finely diced these onions. And to the onions, I'm going to add some uh, some garlic. And Gina, if you could just get me a sharp knife. Yeah, no, good one. I just like one of the little ones. Um, three or four cloves of garlic crushed into the mix. We have just um, been researching all the, um, the the food value, and we go on about garlic, but we've just found out that it's very high in B6 which is one of the um, essential, brain essentials that we need. So I kind of thought that I'd talk about brain essentials tonight as I'm cooking because, you know, unless we have these important neurotransmitters carting um, essentials up into the brain or that can get to the brain, there's a process, you know, like the more you study the human, the human Function, body functions, especially or brain, brain functions, yeah. especially the brain, it's, so it's phenomenal. Yeah. So before I get on a rant over that, you've seen me put the garlic and the, um, a little bit more, but garlic is very high in B6 as well. It's a natural antioxidant. It's, it's such a, um, a good food, but we've just found out another fact about garlic yeah, tonight, which is too. B6. Yeah. So on top of the garlic, I'm going to... My ginger looks like it's been um, attacked, it's which yeah. it has, um, because we also had dumplings for dinner, didn't we? They were beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. we can vouch for the fact yeah. that um, they are very nice. We're not just quite sure how. So I'm putting the equivalent of about two tablespoons of freshly grated ginger in here. Um, and honestly, ginger's a wonder food as well. Can't, we can't get enough of it. But it's very fibrous. You can actually buy a jar of... I don't... I you don't, don't like doing that? No. no, I, don't, no. I like to just do things from scratch. Okay, yeah. But yeah, to keep it simple, you can. Mm. I think so, it's quite good, actually. I have used it a bit. And um, it was in that soup we had tonight. Yeah. yeah the, well, I mean, it's a faster track if yeah, it's yeah. already done. Yeah. But that's sure. okay. Karen, like did, you, did you peel that ginger first or just cut? I did it. I just, I just grate away without peeling. Oh, awesome. Yeah, and it, you can't tell. So, who's heard of shiitake mushrooms? Are you familiar with shiitake mushrooms? Yeah. Yeah, so I, um, before I... Before I discovered this, which I bought these just down the road at any Asian shop will have them. So they're dried tomatoes and oh, dried tomatoes, <laughs> <laughs> dried tomatoes, dried mushrooms, which I've simply put into um, a bowl and soaked for 30 minutes before using. So they kind of they come out, you know, they're, they're literally dry, but soak them in water for 30 minutes and then drain them. So I've done all that and then and then chop them and then they're going in here into this mix like so. They're actually really nice. Um, I have to say this is a super new recipe for me, but I'm I um I think we've perfected it. That oh, was beautiful <laughs> what we had tonight. It was just delicious. I was most impressed, Kerry. <laughs> Sorry, we can't offer you a taste tonight. Yeah, you have to make them yourselves. But we'll, um, yeah, make it yourselves. Now, the other thing that I've done here is I've added to the recipe. So I think I will update it in, 
in next month's newsletter because this link will go out in that as well that Craig's kindly recording for us. So I'm putting in um, finely sliced cabbage, some, um, some carrot, and it's all just mixing up there beautifully. Thank you, Gina. And then I'm putting in some red pepper. And what I decided when I made it first was that um, I should add some tofu. Now tofu is actually really high in tryptophan, which is one of our important neurotransmitters. So we need serotonin for the brain. We need no norepinephrine. If you can pronounce that in a hurry, you're doing better than me. No norepinephrine. And we need dopamine. So to get those important neurotransmitters into the brain, they need to travel with carbs and good carbs. Good carbs. So Gina's, Gina's going to talk because we are both using brown rice in our recipes. Mm -hmm. And Gina will talk a little bit more about the value of brown rice. But it is one of, it helps cart those important neurotransmitters into the brain. So all the foods that we're using, we've discovered, are really high in, in foods that help us to have mental wellness. And I think there's a severe lack. There's a, mental health is a huge issue today. So I've spun that all around, and I've decided to the recipe I had marinated some, some very, I've used one block of tofu, which I'll show you, which is just one of these. Is everybody familiar with what one block, it's about 300 grams of tofu, and it's just this much. Finally, I chop it in half and then chop it into little cubes, tiny little cubes, and I only need one in there. So I've marinated that simply in some tamari, which is your um, healthy soy sauce, tamari, and some ginger and garlic and a little bit of water. And I've just let that sit for about a couple of hours. Yeah. So just I'm powdered going to, ginger for the marinade. So grated um, crushed ginger or oh, crushed um, ginger, yeah. Grated ginger, um, crushed garlic, tamari and water. So tamari is about a third of a cup and the water was about half a cup. So and then just a good amount of ginger and garlic. You can never overdo those two at all. They're, they're both really good to use. So um, I'm going to put all of that into here in a minute with the brown rice and that is the filling for my dumplings. But just adding a little bit of, this is mirin which is a um, it's like a um, sweet cooking sauce which the Asians use. Now, I think it would be quite nice to replace that with, and I've given the suggestion in the recipe, either maple syrup or um, agave, or there's a new um, sweetener on the block, which is 100% good, which is date syrup. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this bottle. Well, I'm not going to use it all in here. So those are the options. If you don't want to use the sweet cooking syrup, you can use, or sweet cooking sauce, you can use, um, and that's just basically three tablespoons, I think. You've got the recipe anyway, so I'm just dashing it in. And the tamari I'll add, but I've also got it in the marinade, which I put the whole lot in to um, the mix as well. So that's basically a mix, and it's pretty much done. So I can turn that off. Now all I can, do, all I need to do now is just add the the um, tofu that's marinated. Thanks, Gina. That can go away. And then I'm just going to add the one and a half cups of cooked brown rice. Short grain brown rice is the best for this recipe. And I'm going to leave Gina to explain why brown rice rather than rock than why, beyond just being a good fibre food, there's a whole lot more that goes on with healthy carbs, um, whole grains, yes. So, now I'm just gonna mix this all up together. We just about, we've just about got our merry mix for the dumplings. 
smells so, great. I'm just sorry it you can't smell it. It smells great. It tastes great. Mm, sure does. And um, I had to, like I said, this is a relatively new recipe for me, so I had to really work on the wrapping then of the dumplings. Now, um, if my other pan comes over, so I'm just going to... Thank you, we'll take the lid off. So then, pretty much there, just nicely mixed in with the rice. A lot of these, um, the vegetarian dumplings are just vegetables and I just felt like that, you know, the rice gave it and the tofu gave it a more sort of substantial filling, nice and filling, mm. yeah. Mm. Nice, tasty filling, substantial, not just vegetables vegetables in it so now I'm going to just lightly um, sprinkle the base of my pan with some olive oil just so they're not they're not in any way deep fried just a little bit of oil and then I've got the um, I've got our little magic dumpling pastry wraps which are three dollars for the, apparently there's 50 in here Three dollars for a packet of this. It's it's easy, but you could make your own if you want because they are white flour. But anyway, we've got the brown rice, so <laughs> you get away with it. And I'm just simply going to. I've got um, this fine-looking brush here. Gina decided I needed a replacement brush. She had, she had one of those hair ones, you know. They're really <laughs> ghastly because little bits of hair comes out of them yeah. when they get old. And it was getting yeah. old. <laughs> So okay. Gina arrived at my house the other day with a gift. <laughs> she said, get rid of your pastry brush. Oh. So I had, but anyway, I'm using this one tonight. So basically, there's all sorts of ways to, to do your wrapping. And I was experimenting and I thought, oh, this is a total botch up. But I tell you what, you can't put too much yeah, in and I have enough. overloaded. Yeah, yeah tiny. So enough. they're just little, they're just little wrap, little pockets. But I thought, oh, the best way to do it is for anybody who used to smoke. Have you have, have you done your? Particularly if you roll your own. Have you done your roll your own? <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way I can describe to do it. But I was just actually perfecting a more folded option on the ones that we have for tea tonight. Mm -hmm. So I've I've kind of overfilled this one a bit. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to just get me across with my hands. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to show you, I'm going to show you maybe a couple. I'll show you the other one that I just had started to, to perfect. But it, it seals nicely. And then you just place it in the pan. Now I'm going to hand over to Gina in a minute and she will, um, she'll do her um, sushi. Mm. But I'll just do another one as the other way. You put a tiny, oh, I see. And a tiny amount goes in really, doesn't it? It's, much it's just a you tiny want. amount, yeah. yeah. But it's amazing, it doesn't, when you're eating it, it doesn't feel like not very much. It still feels like yeah, a good... Yeah, it's great. For, you know, but I, I just you know. did perfect the other fan way. I don't know if you can see me. Maybe I'll do another one, if anyone can see what I'm doing here. The, the, this is the basic, easy, roll your cigarette type one. So that just like sits like that, like a little... Half moon. A Present. little... What? It's a little animal that looks like this, isn't it? Hedgehog? Mm -hmm. anyway, Armadillo? Armadillo, yeah. <laughs> the other one is like a fan a fan type option that um, I'll show you in a sec. I was just starting to master that. <laughs> so you can have fun with it, you know, like you could get some kids together and, mm. and, yeah, and make dumplings. Yeah. They'd love it. They yeah. could work it out. But the secret is not to overfill it. Mm. And yeah, keep your hands relatively. So the other way is just kind of like a folding. I saw this on internet and I thought, oh dear, I don't think I can do that. But it kind of sits more like a little package. So I was just starting to make that work quite nicely. I've probably overfilled this one. But it just sits like a little money bag or something, which is another option. Anyway, I'll go over and finish these because I'm going to show you the finished product. I'm going to fill my pan. And um, so what happens that basically is over here, I'm going to cook these till they're brown. So they kind of, you can turn them and brown them. And then just towards, once they're browned, you can add like, um, I would put half a litre, 
third of a litre, not even that, maybe half, maybe a quarter of a litre of water in the pan and then it just steams, steam cooks cover for it. about another and cover it for and cook it for about another five minutes. So it's just brown it and then put the water in and cover it and let it steam for another five minutes. Take them out and then you can dress them and serve them with your dipping sauce. I'll show you the finished product very shortly. Thank you, Gina. I'll just mm -hmm. work around you. Yeah. Off you go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, uh, make some sushi. And I don't know if you've ever had a go at doing that, but it's quite a fun thing to do. It's a really neat thing to do with kids. Um, uh, I, I had a Bible in school class and every second week we would make sushi um, and uh, the kids would come in early, come in at eight o'clock and make sushi until nine o'clock. We made about 20 rolls. And then at lunchtime they would sell it. Um, and the money went to um, went to Missions Without Borders, actually, which is a mission in Romania. And it was they, they loved it. And it was great fun. But it's certainly something that they they mastered. They were great at it, and it's something that kids really love to do. But they had these beasties. I don't know if you've ever seen a, a sushi maker. This little thing here. So I'll do it both. You may not have a sushi maker, so I'll do it both ways with a sushi maker and without a sushi maker. But like um, the dumplings. Um, Oh, this has come apart. Like the dumplings, you mustn't put too much in. It's the same sort of thing. You can have a bit of a disaster if you don't, uh, <clears throat> if you overfill. But you've just got to clip these two sides together. And I had them all ready because it's hard to click and now it's come undone. So now I have to try and stick it back together again, which I will do. Whoopsie. Let's do this. Why is it not working? Because I'm on camera, that's why. Oh, that's a good sound. Yay, that's what I want now. Stay. Okay, good. So, I have got brown rice here. And um, brown rice, as Kerry said, most of us know that brown rice and brown flour and, and the whole grains, they're really good for keeping you regular, which is true, and that's great. But there's way more to um, whole grains than just keeping you regular. Um, and it's a lot to do with brain function. Um, and really, the, the, the carbohydrates... Um, that are in, in whole grains uh, are used to, to, to transport all the nutrients that your brain needs up to your brain. They're like little, they're like little um, wagons that carry the nutrients up to your brain. It's a great little system how it all works. But not only does it, is it good for your brain, it's also really good for, um, for helping protect us against heart disease um, and um, cancer, strokes, obesity, diabetes, type 1 and type 2, and um, depression and insomnia, which is amazing. And these things here, they're all very, pre those conditions are all very prevalent in our society. And um, um, I think we could really alleviate that if we were to have more whole grains. And you know, I was in the supermarket today and I had a look when I was buying this brown rice and there was 35 half shelves for rice, if you can imagine. And five of them had brown rice and 30 of them had white rice. And white rice doesn't do any of those things um, that brown rice does. It doesn't help against heart disease, strokes, cancers, diabetes, depression, insomnia. It, it, it doesn't, but brown rice does. So um, it's a really good idea to try and try and use it instead. But you've got to be careful how you cook it. And I've found that um, if you don't get it right, you can, you, know, you, can, you can get a bit disappointed and lose heart. But I've found that two cups of short grain brown rice to six cups of water is the right ratio. So you put them in the pot together with a bit of salt and cook it until the water disappears. And that's all I did. So that's what that is there. So for the sushi. For sushi, yeah. So I just want to say for my brown rice, yeah. I, I have two, I actually soak it. My little Korean friend said, you need to soak it and wash it first and get rid of all the starch, apparently. My mother always used to wash rice, and I used to wonder why she did it. I didn't do it, but then I've just found out that we're supposed okay, to. Right. Okay. So pre-wash it, even soak it. You, if, you, if you want, you could soak it overnight. Rinse all that extra water off. And then for me, it's like one cup of rice to two cups of water. And then bring it to the boil, cover it, and then just slow simmer for usually about... 40 minutes, and the water totally absorbs. So you have one to two, and I had one to three. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So the yeah. rice needs to be soggier. Yeah. When I, when, before I cook this rice, I put it in a sieve and run the tap over it to wash it like that. That's quite an easy way to wash rice. 
Okay, so when you're making sushi, that the, the rice is usually flavoured with something, a powder that you buy called miscam. And basically that is, if you look at the ingredients, it's glucose powder and um, dehydrated vinegar. So don't ask me how you dehydrate vinegar, but that's what the ingredients are. And neither of those are very good for you. So I've tried to think of a better way to flavour the sushi rice. And this is what I came up with. So I had a half a cup, no, sorry, a quarter of a cup of lemon juice. So let's get that. And I need this little bowl to put it in. I'll just measure my little quarter cup of lemon juice with my wonderful lemon squeezer. These lemons aren't very good. Sometimes one lemon, well half a lemon gives you a quarter of a cup, but these ones I could tell they weren't great, but they weren't good ones when I was in the supermarket today. <laughs> I might take two, you see, so you've got to, you can't say the juice of one lemon because sometimes it's the juice of two lemons, which in this case it is, but another, a better lemon might have just needed one. But this is gonna use this, these ones that, that were available today were not as good. So there's almost a quarter, but I'm going to put the other half in as well. If you put your lemon in the microwave for a little while, yep. it gets a lot more juice out of it. Oh, really? Well, that's good. Mm. Did, everyone... Did you put your yep. lemon in the microwave for a little while? It can help you to, them to be more juicy. I actually need another half, believe it or not. But if I'd done the microwave, I'd have done Oh, How long about fifteen seconds. Okay. Oh, right. okay. yep. Ten to fifteen seconds. Good. So there we are. I've got my good quarter of a cup of lemon juice. I might as well put the rest of that bit in. And a quarter of a cup of maple syrup. So that's going in. Oh yum. Yep. <laughs> Great stuff this. It's just beautiful. So there we are. Then I'm going to put in one teaspoon of salt. There it is here. So you should tell them about your sushi making experiences. What do you mean? With kids at the school. I did. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I didn't yeah. Understand. Unfortunately, the Barbara and Schools is closed down now, so we can't do that anymore with the kids. It was great. It was such a wonderful initiative. That they really had to, um, you know, had to come in earlier. They really had to make an effort. To help others and it really it was good for them you know they, they had to give up their lunch hour they had to come to school early and uh this is a great experience okay so that's nicely mixed together and that's just going to go in here and you're just going to go with your fork lightly like this and that will make this rice taste really nice um but i find that somehow the rice it, it's only good when you eat it fairly soon. If you leave this till tomorrow, somehow the, the flavour, the rice seems to eat up the flavour or something. I don't know how, how, how you describe it, but it won't be as flavoursome, it won't taste as good tomorrow as it will today. Yeah, so it's better to eat it, just make as much as you need for the day. But mix it right round so that you make sure you've got it nicely through the whole lot. So, just about there, that sounds, it looks nice. So it's a little bit wet, but not too bad. Yeah, good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make our sushi with this super duper gadget I've got here. Who's got one of these gadget things? Anybody? Oh, Elizabeth's got one, not Jenny. No. Yeah, Tracy's got one, no. Laurel, have you got one? No. no. Well, don't worry, no. I'm going to show you both ways. Just in case you're tempted to try these things, it's quite good. The kids at school, they all had them. Have you got that dishcloth here? It is. When we made it at school, several of them had them. So we, we used to have three, three going at once, so they would, you know, they would <clears> much quicker you get a slightly more professional finish so what we're going to do is you get a little other part of it and that goes in the end here just put that in there like that and then we're going to start putting our sushi in i'll put it like this so you can all see and it's good to have a little thing of water because it stops it from sticking to your hands quite so much so we're just going to put some in here But as I say, not overfilling. If you overfill, you have grief. Because it all comes smushing out the um, sides and you, and, you, and you ruin the avocado. You break it up too much. But if you don't put enough in, it's no good either. So it's about getting the right, right amount. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, interesting. So, yeah, it's, I, I, you get better at it as you do more. It's, it's, the, it's the feel of it. I hope I, don't, hope I get it right after having said that, having done this so many times. But actually, the kids used to do it all the time at school rather than me. I used to just oversee. 
and they were probably better at it than I was. I should have them here, really, shouldn't I? Okay, so that's just sitting in there nicely, like that. Try not to get it on the little joiny things. And then I'm going to rinse my fingers. And I'm going to get my little cloth. Good. Now, when you're filling it, you mustn't put too much in. So I've got prepared some stuff here. I've got some tofu, which I have. I'll tell you about that in a second. And I've got here some avocado, capsicum and carrot. You want it to look pretty, have nice colours. So we've got green, orange, red and brown. So it's quite a nice looking thing. Okay, so we're going to pop these in here. Um, and again, not, not, not putting too much in. Just about like that much. That, so the, the tofu, what I did was I bought some tofu and um, I cut it into little wee fingers like this and then I coated it in flour and Macelle stock powder. So oh. um, I had, um, I used wholemeal flour since I've been talking so much about wholemeal flour. About three tablespoons of wholemeal flour and one of Macelle's is about the ratio. So you, you coat each one of these little sticks in that flour mixture and then you put them in a hot pan. The pan's got it with oil in it, just a small amount of oil and it's got to be hot. And if you put that coated tofu in the hot pan, it won't stick. It, it just, it, if you just move the pan, you'll find they just move beautifully. If you don't put the flour on, they stick. Yeah, so unless you've got a non-stick pan, but I've just got a plain good stainless steel pan and um, if, as long as the oil's hot and the tofu's coated in flour, when you move the pan, they just move beautifully in there. So you get these lovely, nice little golden um, chips, which is really nice. Okay, so now we're going to just put the other little extra colour in. So capsicums, really good for you. Capsicums have got, um, what have they got? Lots of vitamin C. We also found out the red bell pepper yeah. is B6. Oh, B6, that's right. So that's, that's brain stuff. So that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What the, that's good what for the brain your brain as well. Neurotransmitters are. Yes. And magnesium. Did you hear that? B6 and mm -hmm. magnesium to transport your goodies. Up with the, oh, yeah. Up with the carb. Yeah, the, the carbohydrates transmits and then this it stuff. translates into no epinephrine or and serotonin and dopamine. It's, dopamine's the happy hormone. So here you have the perfect food for the brain. You've got the whole grains and you've got the brain foods. All wrapped up in a nice little parcel. So how about that for? That was by accident that, but that went out well. Where's my water? Here it is. Here, I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to wash these hands of mine. So they, get, they do get very sticky. So now we're just going to close this over. So I've got carrot, tofu, capsicum, avocado. Okay, and hopefully this is going to behave itself now, and I haven't overdone it. And you just close it. Click, click. Very good. And then you put the end on. Those of you who don't have one of these little things. And then you wind it in. Like so, till it goes to the end, which is just down there. Good. And then what you do is, just get this out of the way. You get your bamboo, one of these thingies, and your nori, your seaweed. Also very good for you, high in iron. Difficult for plant-based eaters to find iron, so seaweed's a good, be good thing to use there. And you put this here, the shiny side down, you want that on the outside, and then you're just going to wet the end of this so that it's gonna be nice and sticky. And then we're gonna just take this hair off the end and we're gonna go like this and hopefully it comes out nicely. Sorry, I'm making a wrap I might actually put my very good. Dump things over here. I'm going to roll this off. here up now. Mm -hmm. And then you just, that's getting quite reasonable there, that's quite good. I can feel a little bit of an ear gap. But that is going to stick together in one or two seconds. And I've got this other thing which is really cool. Where is it? I'm just going to bring my This thing here, this is my cradle. For cutting sushi, look. I got these two things, this and this, I got from that cool shop in Morehouse Avenue, the kitchen thing shop. Have we decided what that shop's called? I keep forgetting. I meant to look it up and I forgot. Kitchen things, didn't you? Yeah, say? yeah. Kitchen well, equipment. It's called, it's called Total Food Equipment. Total Food Equipment. Is it? Yeah. On Morehouse Ave. 
Yeah. Yeah, down by the Durham Overbridge. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, just past there. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's where you'll get these things. And these, these are hard to find. I, I, I shot high low for these. But I eventually found them at that place. Okay, so that goes in there. And look, then you do this. Um, can you get me a plate, Kerry? Yeah. Where's that big sharp knife that I had? Is that gone? Yes. We are. So we're just going to cut these up. Oh, one of these. Yes, please. Just Hopefully come and wipe your bench down. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. I oh, know. I haven't actually because I'm going to do the other. I know. The non do for thing. Yeah. So you just cut these. Look. And hopefully they look reasonably nice. And I'm not very good at knowing how to get them in the right in the middle. But hopefully, not that good. My avocado is to one side. It should be like a nice cute little thing in the middle. But, have we finished the last? Yep. Okay. Here we are. So you just cut those all out in the cradle. But if you want to make one, if you haven't got one of those fancy sushi makers, what we can do is just use this here. And just put our nori sheet on there. And uh, you don't get quite as professional a finish, but shiny side down, that's that way there. And what we, oh, I do need that, oh, there's the last, good. And then we're just going to wet our fingers again. And we're going to put in our rice like this. We're going to leave about a centimetre, no, about an inch, three centimetres without any rice on it. Just cover this here. And this is where your fingers start getting really, really mucky, so like that, and then like this, and then you don't have a mucky problem. So if you've got any grandchildren or children, this is a fun thing to do with them in the holidays. They, they love doing this. Quite often, whenever I have kids around, we, we end up making sushi, and it's just it's a really fun thing to do together. It's really nice. And they fill, with, fill them with all sorts of different things. Good. Okay. So then we're going to just wash our fingers again. And put in our fillings. And you put it around about, about a quarter of the way along. So about there. We don't fit off the smoke alarm. We might do, might we? It's smelling quite like it could be doing that. <laughs> okay, one. Oh, my other stuff. That we. Oh no, here it is here. It's not, we'll have the fire brigade here. Yeah. <laughs> We've had that happen. We now. have. We had one time when we were cooking, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. it's neat. It's nice and small about this big. It's not too big. Keep them small and neat. Capsicum. Beautiful stuff. Lovely juicy red capsicum. It's hard to beat, really. Red bell pepper. Yeah. And avocado, wonderful, sumptuous, fabulous stuff. Look at it. And, what, and we found out, oh, well, once we've moved from that slide, can we go to the other one, Craig? We can, because we found out some other things about capsicum tonight, about avocado tonight. What can we find out? Okay, so uh, avocados have tyrosine and omega-3. Omega so they're a really good, healthy fat. Tyrosine is one of our brain neurotransmitters, and omega-3 is also one of those essentials. Um, so we wouldn't have known that, would we? No. No. Omega-3 in avocados. Omega-3 in avocados. Yeah, because you know how they're always telling you you need to yeah. eat fish to have omega-3. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, no. yeah. And we would yeah. say flaxseed, ground flaxseed or yeah. linseed yeah. for your omega-3s, but also avocado is very good. So it's a healthy fat. Yeah. But it's um it, it has got your omega threes in it. Red bell pepper has omega three, hello, as well. Yeah, isn't that so amazing? it's actually not B six for the red red bell pepper, it's omega three. So, so there you go. This is not gonna look so quite as fabulous. It's alright. I've got the going to put the join at the bottom. Yeah, okay, let's go. Let's see what this looks like. I might just cut the end off. My dumplings are about to get some water in them. And just to finish off the steam. Okay. You're doing together. Okay, so now I'm gonna. Oops. You need yeah. a really sharp knife for this because the, the 
the nori can just tear, can't it? So yeah, it's a sharp yeah, that's knife, beautiful. This knife is just gorgeous. Yes, I this is it. a knife you've had forever, isn't no, it? No, no, no. This is one from the kitchen here. Oh, this is is that? One, no. oh okay. Yeah, well, yeah. we spend a lot of money on the knives. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, it's worth it. A good it. knife is worth it's worth it. Yeah. Now I'm just going to um, throw the water in here now, so we'll have a bit of a steam up going on. So, yeah, I think it's only about a quarter of a cup. You don't need much. And I'll cover. Right. I should have done a competition. I should have made the ones with the with the rolly thing and the ones by hand, and you had to guess which ones were which. But do you know which ones are, you are the going ones? Here? Yes, I am. Look at that. You know which ones I used. The machine, the goof do fly. I see they're just a bit more regular, aren't they? This one's a bit wonky. But there we are. Here's our sushi. You can sprinkle it with a little bit of soya sauce or tamari or something like that if you like. And serve. But as I say, you want to eat it fairly soon after you've made it. That's one thing that doesn't keep very well at all for very long. So eat them up. So what's happening now, Kerry? What now, are you doing you're now? I'm going to do the end mommy, and then I'll I need be that. I need that. Yeah. She's got my cloth. Thank Sorry. You. I'll grab this one. Okay, so what do so, I do now? Okay, there's another Japanese thing actually. Actually, yes, because what we thought was, you know, what, what do you have with sushi? Yeah. We've got as far as sushi, and then we decided the dumplings were okay with sushi. And then I just Googled options for what, what the Asian people eat with their sushi, and we came up with endamame beans. Who yeah. knows what they are? Endamame beans. What are endamame beans? Do you know What's what they are? It's a soybean, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Right, yeah. Green, green soy, green yeah. soybeans. Yeah. Mm. And they, they are. Do yeah. you want to go Huge down the list? Powerful protein, folks. But endamame is the soybean before it's gone dry. So normally soybeans are grown, and when the when the plant is um, the seed is fully formed, it then starts to dry, and usually that's when the soybeans are used. But the endamame is when the soybean before it's gone dry, so it's harvested a lot earlier. So you've got the fresher greener bean and um, great at lowering cholesterol levels um, and also which would, that means reducing the risk of heart attack which is really good and rich in folate um, which also lowers the risk of heart disease and it's a beneficial to our liver and kidneys mm -hmm. and it boosts our immune system and uh, helps prevent depression so really we, we need to be uh, getting this stuff into our bodies don't we um, so we're going to do that now um, let's just have a, when I put my yellow here, where's that pot? We're just doing a little trans, transfer of options. Where's my green marketing option? Where's my green pot here? Right oh, here. they are here, sorry. Right, Jen's found her beans. Like, found them, sorry. So, green endomami beans, these have been in the, in the pot and boiled for three minutes, basically three or four minutes. And then I drained the water off and now they've gone cold. Do you want that? There, yes, right. I do, yeah, yeah. So basically, so there they are, been boiled for three minutes and gone cold. So what I'm going to do now is grab that lovely knife, Kiri, if you can help me there. Um, where is it? Here it is. Sorry, no, Kiri, you can help me. And I'm going to cut up one of my favourite herbs, chives. It's so they're so good for you, and they're great at this time of year. They're just growing flat out at the moment, so we're just using huge amounts of um, chives at the moment. My husband and I, we, they're probably our favourite herb. So I'm going to cut these into nice little wee bits and they're going to go in with our endamame beans. But then in about, about three weeks time the flowers will start coming on the chives. And so then they start, um, going to yeah, start going to seed and flowering. So, that, so I've got a few different varieties so that I've got them coming on all at different times so that I can use them for longer. And that's, uh, Quite a good little system to have in place. Good. So there we are, chives. Um, Endomami beans are also high in folate, and that's something that um, that's one of the um, um, uh, key things when a woman is pregnant. They need folate. You probably heard about that. Um, it really helps the baby to develop well. Um, so it's good if you're pregnant to have lots of. Folate. Folate. Folate's another yeah. important brain neurotransmitter. Yeah. So another one of those essentials that we need to get the right things into our brain. Mm. And also vitamin K is in endomami beans. Yeah. yeah. And, and vitamin K, who knows what that's really good for? Anybody? Um, to blood clotting, isn't it? Blood. 
Thank you, Dad. Listen, you can't have a vitamin K you can't take if you're on warfarin. <laughs> but really? Actually, oh, okay. Right, yes. okay. Yeah, because it helps. It's just the clotting of the blood. Yeah. Right. Okay, right. That's right. That's what they give the children, the babies, the help with, isn't it? Something to do with that, isn't it? I'm not sure. But anyway, <laughs> one thing I do maybe know... We'll stick with the cooking. We'll still, we'll, yeah, we'll stick with what we know. And when I was researching vitamin K, one thing it was good for was bone health, actually. So really good for osteoporosis um, to, to make sure you've got really strong bones. And I'm just going to read to you something here that I, I, I found on the, um, uh, the, uh, the European Food Safety Authority. So that's not the New Zealand or the WHO, but the European Food Safety Authority has approved a health claim for vitamin K, noting that a cause and effect relationship has been established between the dietary intake of vitamin K and the maintenance of normal bone health. So that's coming, that's how the Europeans see um, vitamin K. And so if you eat these, it's going to be good for your own health. But they've also got lots of other vitamins and minerals. Um, and also uh, 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 um, uh, uh, overseas studies have suggested that they're good for reducing breast cancer, prostate cancer. And um, not all um, studies agree, but, um, but, um, but the end of being does is, is seen as beneficial um, uh, for, for those uh, helping to fight against those things. So uh, into my cooked cool and demanded beans, I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil, about that much. And I'm going to put in my chives. And I'm sprinkling my dumplings with spring onions. So right. these are chives are, are, are Gina's, what, 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 what do we call it? Wherever you see Gina's food, chives are not far away. They're true, that's true, true, true. And yeah. I'm, I'm kind of sprinkling and dressing up with spring onions and some toasted sesame seeds for our... Um, and then, so I put in here a bit of oil, some chives, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of the cells. And the this is the chicken one. Like, as we know, that's a plant-based um, stock powder. So about a teaspoon of the cells is going to go in there. And I'm just going to toss it all together. So if you're thinking of wanting to have something different, you've got greens, you think, oh, I always do cabbage, oh, I always do peas, oh, I always do broccoli, I always do leeks. Well, you could do this. And that's something different on your plate when you've got your um, different veggies. And just put it in a nice bowl. And that looks rather delicious, if you ask me. And this yeah. is, you know, this is for, like, if we're doing an Asian, Asian meal, this would be what it would look like. Yeah, and improve, we could they? also... Yeah. We could also do a side of, um, I saw sliced baked kumara with it as mm -hmm. well. Yep. So there's, there's all sorts of options. I did add the kimchi recipe to the newsletter. I, I personally don't like it. So <laughs> you can decide. It's sort of like exactly, um, isn't it? Yeah, it's pickled cabbage, but which apparently mm. with time, um, it, it's good probiotics, but I just, I didn't warm to the flavour. So, but um, some people may. There's a recipe there. There's all sorts of ways. I didn't do the spice kimchi. Um, apparently, they eat a very uh, one with chili powder, um, which you can add to the the recipe I've put in. But you can decide whether you like it or not. For me, no. It's dry. Okay. Might have, yeah. Didn't like mm -hmm. it. But I did have a Russian girl because the Russians they do sauerkraut, don't they? Um, and Germans do, I think. Oh, yeah. Germans do sauerkraut. Yeah, so, and I served it fresh. So, so they would do the kimchi fresh as a side. So my Russian girl came for um, lunch. I, I had it fresh and she thought it was great. So okay. I guess it just depends on what you what you like as far as flavouring goes. But I, all of this, love it. But I didn't like the kimchi. So anyway. Now, our last right. recipe that we're away. cleaning up yep. is... We're just going to do a wee swap over here. I'm going to bring my blender over here. I'm going to make the um, sesame, cashew and sesame balls. I'll just bring the blender over this side. And let Gina... So this is again, if we go back to our... I'm going to be using cashew and sesame. So sesame... Seeds are, does anybody have any idea what they're high in? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> You've gone quiet. Oh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's all good. Um, 
Sesame is high in iron and tryptophan, which is your good brain neurotransmitter, um, and also calcium. So sesame is very good. And cashews are also high in iron. Believe it or not, cashews. Yeah. Normally you relate to iron as being green, don't you? Yeah, green, spinach. green. Because we've heard about Popeye and spinach and iron and everything, eh? Yeah. So it's something to do with that, why we have that idea of green stuff being iron. Um, but there's another thing, there's some surprising little things. So I have actually, this is quite a big recipe, it makes a lot. So, but I've actually done the whole. So I've dry roasted, just for 10 minutes, in the oven, three cups of cashew pieces. And I'll just fill the water over here, I know I don't. Anyway, I'm going to give them a quick blip, so I'll give you that, Gina. Mm -hmm. And we'll waste not want not. Mm -hmm. um, a quick blip in this fine machine. And I just... I just need the um, glass bowl. And I have soaked some, uh, some dates just for only about 10 minutes and some boiling water and drain. So they're waiting for me to blend up as well. So the section is just sitting over the end. So that's, you have to watch because this, this thing is so speedy, but this is the expensive blister, but my one wouldn't take, it would take longer. But you don't want the cashews going into powder. You don't want them still a bit chunky. So the next thing is the dates are just going in here. So. For those, I don't know how many of you are dealing with sweet tooths, you know, like you love the sugary foods that aren't good for us. Dates are our best option for sweetener or one of the best. And the date syrup, which I, I'm going to, the recipe has honey in it as an option as well for sweetener. The dates are sweet enough, but I'm going to just chuck a little bit of date syrup in as well. And this, oh, I've got a teaspoon here, and some vanilla. So I've got some. Um, vanilla bean extract, the healthy stuff, which we might need, <laughs> we might need a male. <laughs> oh no, here we go. Yay. Um, so I'll just put in a teaspoon of vanilla, but this is a dessert spoon, but anyway, you know, you get the general idea. I'm doing a near enough will do. Okay, so this is just going to blend up for a little bit. really doesn't have to go into a complete paste, but pretty much it is with this fine machine. So now I'm just simply going to mix these together. And I'll give you the hash. <laughs> Thanks, Gina. I just need this uh, wooden stirring spoon so I can mix this up. So that's pretty much paste. For those of any of you who have done chip, I know Elizabeth has, have, um, Laurel has, um, you may have already tried this recipe, it may be a winner, but I love the fact that it's, it's um, in fact the suggestion is that you do this with your fingers, so I don't even need this. I need a plate to put my balls on though, so I'm actually going to get in here with my fingers and mix it. Um, but it's quite a nice little sweet option to finish on after your meal. Not Japanese though, particularly. No, but they, yeah, I looked at their desserts and that they use a lot of um, bean paste. They have sweet, they make beans sweet. They have sweet bean paste and they have them in little pastry wraps and dumplings and those sorts of things. And I thought, well, that they're actually, there's, there's a lot of work in their desserts. And I thought we just need something fast to finish with. Something that you can see doesn't take long. It's like 10 minutes to, to dry roast your cashews and, ke and sesame. And then um, a, just a couple of minutes to do the mix. So you could have this done in no time. The suggestion is that you um, 
that you refrigerate these for a couple of hours, but you don't need to because it's actually, yeah, but I have had the mixture sitting for some time. So then you just form them into a little ball as big or as little as you want. And I've got gunky hands, so I'll clean them off first before I roll them in the sesame seeds. Thank you, Gina. Um, and then you've got a nice little sweet, healthy dessert loaded with, what are we? Iron, tyrosine, iron, iron tyrosine, and I can't see if yeah, sesame is, yes, tryptophan. So there's our little sesame balls. Can refrigerate. Here we go. It's, it's looking a bit lowly on the big plate. There we go. So that's our meal for tonight. Yes. Sorry, we cannot give you a food taste. No, sure. But we'll bring it to you next time we can get together, shall mm. we? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, we actually have to finish off. We've got Natasha with us tonight, and we're hoping to be able to feature a natural remedies segment to our VJ Club nights. So Natasha's, she's come on board tonight spontaneously. We asked her and she said, sure. She's got, she's, Natasha's trained in home remedies, natural ways of helping your body to build up immunity and fight off bugs and disease. So Natasha, come and share with us what, you, oh, yeah. what you're going to share tonight. Thank uh, you. I've got my crypt notes here, so I hope you don't mind. <laughs> We've been speaking about garlic, and I know that um, Kerry has um, told you about some things that are good about garlic. Um, so it lowers your blood pressure. So if you've got high blood pressure and you use a lot of this, it's good. Um, it improves your cholesterol, so it's very good for reducing your risk of heart disease. And it's rich in antioxidants, so it's good for the brain. It's, um, it helps prevent... Um, Alzheimer's and dementia and then something I didn't know it may detox heavy metals from your body which is really 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 good and it's also good for bone health I didn't know that mm -hmm. either so um, it's it's got selenium in and vitamin C and vitamin B6 and manganese so it's a very powerful little vegetable herb whichever way you want to use it so it's always better to use fresh. Um, it, once you've used, um, processed your um, fruits or vegetables or whatever, um, it actually starts oxidizing and then you lose the properties, the nutritional and the medicinal properties of the food. So I'm, I'm going to just not demonstrate, but just talk you through what you do. But there's another um, benefit to garlic that you've forgotten, it, Natasha. Yes. It tastes fabulous. Of course. <laughs> it's very it good for wonderful. culinary purposes. Yeah. And that's the best reason yes, to yes, use yes. it. <laughs> so <laughs> what I use this for in a natural remedy is once I develop, as soon as I develop a sore throat or a scratchiness or anything like that, um, when you develop early symptoms of flu or cold, I would take this three times, even four times a day. If you've got the stomach, you could try and um, chew it whole. I know some people can do that. I think it's a bit um, birdy, mm. but um, I would just make a toast, toasty with it. Um, um, press it through a garlic press and then um, put it on a toast and maybe some butter, well, peanut butter, peanut butter mm. or um, anything that's got a neutrally flavor, um, just spread on your toast. Sorry, your toast, and can then I, you can eat it. Can I suggest something? Yeah. Well, what I, what Dad used to do when we were kids was when we had sort of a cold type thing, was he had a piece of toast that was like um, a Vogel bread type toast. It's quite a, a, a sort of a wheaty toast. And get a clove of garlic and just scrape it over the toast, and it all goes, it all breaks down and goes into it until mm -hmm. you just got a tiny bit left. So it's actually quite, it works really effectively. And we used to love that. Yeah. As kids. It's yeah. delicious. It's a delicious remedy. I don't mind eating it at normal meal times. But when I do have um, um, some symptoms, I do take it three times a day after my meals. It doesn't matter when you take it. And I also try to take it just before um, I go to bed. Although in, in general, I don't have any, any meals um, after I've eaten my um, tea. 
But um, for a remedy, I think it's important. And then it takes me about three days or so, and then my symptoms are gone or heavily reduced, but usually gone. So it's worth trying it. Mm. And um, enjoy cooking with it. It's good for you in many ways. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Natasha. That's yeah. great. It's good to have that little health tip. Okay, so we're going to sign out now. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Stay Thank well, you. stay healthy, and we'll stay in touch some way, either live or more Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Newsletter, definitely. Okay, take Thanks care. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.